YouTube, what's going on, man? So today we return to Percy and the Beast Productions channel. It's been a long time since we haven't reacted to some of his videos. And the sad part is that there's no longer any more sort of Fallout. I'm not too sure why, but at least he adapted to a new series, which is Soder and the SCP. Now, I believe he adapted this series from Dan the Blue Tank 66. So now I guess they're both working together to create this awesome series and continue it on. And this is the first episode, by the way. So Oh, epic little intro. Ah, oh, there you go, Dan the Blue, Tank 66. <laughs> Yo, the intro is wicked, bro. Secure, contain. Oh no, protect. August 16th, 1992. It's only now that I thought to write this down in case something happened. My name is Bertie Williams, Bert for short, and I am a soap door steam engine driver. Me and my co-worker Barry Morris are the driver and fun of James Red Engine. Some suspicious people have been reported to be seen trespassing on the island, and have seemed to be inspecting and destroying various sets of buckets. The railway board has announced the staff must be very careful to report anything strange to the head of the railway, Sir Topham Hat. James is doing fine and is resting in the shed. He'll need the energy since our next train is due in 30 minutes. If anything else strange happens, I'll make sure to write about it in my journal. <laughs> Alright, September 4th, 1992. We turn James around for the return journey. It was only 20 minutes till departure, so there was time to spare. I stayed in the cab as Barry walked into the station to have a chat with the station master. As we waited, James claimed he saw a helicopter. It looked like one of those military ones, according to him. That must be the SCP. The black diesel in general, we didn't recognize Poldin, and just stood there in silence and stared at us. He then looked back and it seemed he was whispering something to someone. That's when everything went haywire. Barry came back to James, and just as he hopped into the cab, Newman pulled out guns and started shooting into the air. The Bruh. station was filled with screams as they threatened to kill anyone who didn't cooperate. Or at least a break, and we sped out of the station, passing by the diesel as we almost got it by a couple of bullets. Oh. Alright, so it seems like the madness has begun. Helicopter flew overhead. Bro, oh, he said Terminate Engine 5. All three of us were horrified. We charged down the line. We got off the branch line and headed onto the main line, hoping nothing was in our way. We saw Gordon up ahead pulling the express as usual. None of us said anything as we rushed by, as our goal was to get away from the helicopter. We suddenly heard a whistle behind us. The dwarf who was pulling his train sped onto the main line behind us. Stephen looked back and his eyes widened at the sight of the helicopter. We soon heard the motion of a missile speeding straight towards us as Barry shoveled in more for dear life. Oh no! Got a word! That is one big explosion. Thankfully the points were set to Henry's forest and I slammed on the brakes and James came to a stop. I grabbed my face cloth and wiped my head. Barry took a look at the gauges and saw that James was out of call and low on water. So thank God that we stopped. Barry and I quickly turned off steam so James wouldn't explode. After a few moments a helicopter Possibly the same one that had chased us hovered by. Harry didn't notice a bright red engine surrounded by green is beyond me. Luckily, we weren't spotted. After the coast had cleared, I told Barry to stay with James and I decided to walk over to the single box that we had passed. I carefully walked up the stairs of the single box. 
and opened the door to see a very concerned man. It was the new single man, Daryl. He said he was keeping a lookout for the armed men and was very happy to see me. I told him everything about what had happened at Kirk Ronan, and he frowned, telling me that he had heard the sound of warning sirens and had decided to stay put during the attack. There was a telephone nearby, and I was going to use it to call for help, but Daryl said that he had already tried. The phone lines had been ripped down earlier by the men, shutting down most of the power near the end. I and offered him to join us, but he was hesitant because he would be breaking railway practices. But I eventually talked him into it. The two of us walked back to Barry and James. We have been sitting ducks here for a while, and we have to get moving. We stayed here for almost an hour, while we waited for James to cool down. We can't stay here, but we can't do anything as starting James would be risky. But I believe there's a water tower around the bend. It will only be a minute, so we should be fine. As we pulled up, James slowly filled up with water. We decided to go down to Crosby. It isn't too far, so everything should be okay. Gary made sure that the points were set to the main line, just in case. For all we know, some engines could be travelling around the island to try and find out what happened. Oh, James is mad, bro. I'm glad to say that we made it to Crosby safely. And Darrow and Barry shoveled some of the last remaining coal into James's tender, being just enough to get us to the coal depot. I ran into the station to see if there was anybody hiding, if there was any food, or if the station master's office had a working television. Thankfully, when I entered the office, the station master's television was still working. Without a second thought, I turned on the TV, and I listened to a live served or news broadcast. These people are known as the SCP Foundation. It is currently unknown what they want, or how many have been affected by this. And reporters said that for the time being, to avoid them, the Soda Sea Action Rescue are looking for them, and will do what they can. <laughs> it wasn't long until the report began to cut to static. I could saw and I heard screaming with the sounds of gunshots. I think it's safe to say that they are probably dead. Bro, the SCP just After pulls up and shoots everyone. I walked back to the gang and told them what I had seen. Our next move is to call the Po. We will keep a close eye out on the way there. The sun was slowly beginning to set by the time we got there. And there is rolling stuck scattered around the yard. Either on the rails, in the sidings, or derailed. Some of the trucks had seemed to have been jammed into the turntable well. And some of them had bruises and several cuts on their faces. They didn't seem so troublesome now. None of them said a word, but only stared at us, looking petrified as they must have witnessed something truly awful. We wasted no time, and drew James under the hopper, filling up the rest of his tender with coal. Afterwards, Barry, Daryl, and I went to look for anyone who had survived, when we heard a voice. If you're looking for the armed men, then I'm sorry to say that they already stopped by and took some of our brothers with them. We all soon heard the sounds of a steam engine getting closer and closer as a whistle blew behind us. A whistle that all of us recognized. Our faces lit up with excitement Percy. as Percy emerged from the shadows. He was shocked to see us, but quickly smiled. Sam and Greg hopped out of his camp and greeted us warmly. It was interrupted by the sounds of faint angry voices in the distance, and Percy told us to hide as he sprinted back into the shed. Before he could react, James jerked forward and ran to the shed too. Oh man. Alright, well that's the end. Pretty sweet. Alright, so it's pretty cool to say that um we have a series where James is the main character instead of having like Thomas and whatnot, you know? Gives like a different perspective. Pretty cool. Alright, well shout out to uh, Percy and Dan the Blue Tank for this awesome series. Can't wait for episode two. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.